the battle of last year, PA in the 5A, Robinson in the 4A. You could expect some fireworks, and that's exactly what we had. That's coming up on Fearless Friday. Hey, it's Troy Lynch coming to you from Cabot, Arkansas, right here at Panther Stadium. Coming up, we got highlights from the defending 6A state champs, the Searcy Lions. They're taking on the Cabot Panthers for what I like to call the Big Cat Bowl. That's coming up. Hey, everybody. Roger Scott. We are on location in Mall Mount McCarty Nissan Stadium. Sylvan Hills is coming to town. We've got high school football for you. Nick Walters here at Little Rock Central versus Little Rock Christian. Highlights coming up. Fearless Friday starts now. Friday night never felt as good. For months, the season was in jeopardy, and then a tropical storm hit the state. COVID-19 and the storms have forced changes, but we had high school football tonight. We start with a game featuring two top 10 teams. Number 10, Conway hosted number 4, Fayetteville, 7A West, 7A Central. Conway trails 16 to 10 when the Wampus Cats, Maurice Freeman intercepts a Fayetteville pass in the second quarter. Later in the second, Conway's Preston Udy intercepts another Buchanan pass and puts the Wampus Cats back in control. Conway quarterback Braden Allen completes a 60-yard pass to Bakari Fisher. A few plays later, Jerry Coleman carries in for a four-yard touchdown to put the Wampus Cats up 17-16, and Conway wins it by 17. Number seven, Pulaski Academy is also ranked number one in 5A. Tonight, the Bruins hosted Joe T. Robinson. The Senators are ranked number one in 4A. Jay Burr was at Joe B. Hatcher Stadium. He joins us live. Uh, yeah, Wes, it's, it's not a PA game unless it goes late into the night now, is it? Now, uh, we're going to get to these first half highlights, and then we'll kind of get you caught up here. But as you mentioned, you heard the rankings, top teams in the state. These two teams came to play tonight. All right, well, I guess we don't have highlights, so take my word for it. This game was back and forth here all night long. In fact, Robinson even led at the half, and they scored with about two seconds left in the first half to take that lead. So it was 21 to 20, and now, just to kind of get you updated here, we actually have a player down, but uh, it was, it's 48 to 35 now. They're telling me we've got highlights now, so instead of me just talking about it, we're going to show you. All right, so we're going to figure this out eventually here, but again, let me get you just caught up to speed here. This game's pretty much wrapped up here. Pulaski Academy 48, Robinson 35. In fact, Robinson, now they're playing till the end here. They are scrapping till the very end, even though they're down a couple of uh, touchdowns here. They just got a turnover in this one. But again, 48 to 35, a little over a minute left. Pulaski Academy going to get this one here. So uh, again, these are two teams that are going to be reckoned with when it comes to to the state championships in their respective classes, Wes. Highlights. So, instead of you telling them to roll those highlights, I'll tell them. Let's see those first half highlights. Fearless Friday is back. Both coaches here at PA and Robinson making passion speeches about doing their best to keep everybody safe. That way players can finish the season. But onwards to the season here. PA doing what PA does. Nolan Bruffett finding Cooper White here. And Cooper White just got wide open spaces. Waltz is right into the end zone, and it's 6-0 early on for PA. Now Charlie Pfizer in a quarterback here finds Jalen Witcher outside. And that boy fast. He scores easily, and it's 14-0. Bruins are rolling, but Robinson would finally try to find a little rhythm here. Buddy Gaston finds Ivan Thomas. He's wide. Oh, no. You got to take the ball with you there, young blood. But Michael Reed would bail him out here on the very next play. There we go, 14-7, Robinson. Second quarter now, Robinson rolling. Gaston going to find Thomas here. He doesn't drop the ball that time. We got us a tie game, 14 all. Later, Bruffett going to try to find Witcher again. Doop, doop, doop. Juggling, concentration, touchdown. What a play. PA up 20-14 to 14, right before halftime. Gaston finds Hunter Smith there with two seconds left in the half. Robinson takes the lead, 21 to 20. And as you heard from Jay Burr, PA up right now trying to salt it away. PA is off next week, by the way. Joe T 
host Maumelle, and that'll be a good one. Number eight, Harbor Plate at Jinx, Oklahoma. Harbor looking to make something happen. They're going deep, but no one's there in his jersey. The safety stays home, picks it off. He returns it all the way to the 25-yard line, so Jinx looking good, but Harbor's defense comes up big. Tommy Hudson with the INT saving the offense. Harbor trying to move the ball now. Drew McClendon looking, finds his receiver across the middle. Big gain for Harbor. They're set up, but the drive doesn't produce points. McClendon is picked off near the goal line. Final score in this one, Jinx wins 31-7. to History tonight for the Southwest Griffins. First high school football game in school history, Southwest at West Memphis. Tell you what, West Memphis scored first at 6-0. Southwest. They come right back, touchdown from the Griffins, 6-6, six to six, and they go for two. And the Griffins get that two-point conversion and take the first lead in school history. It's 8-6. to six. They were not done. Later on, looking deep, great play from the receiver, catches it, brings it down, and trots in from the 20-yard line. It is now 14-6. to six. They go for two again. And again, the Griffins get it. They're up 16-6. to six. How about this? Final score, though, it was all downhill from there. West Memphis scored the next 30 points. They win 36-16. Little Rock Christian starts the year ranked number two in 5A. Last year's state finalists began the season with a tough test against 7A's Central Tigers. Nick Walters was at Quigley Cox Stadium and has more. Central starts off with the ball and starts cooking. Markel Cartwright sees daylight, sheds tackles, and hits the gas. Ensuing drive and ORCA answers. Colin Cooper throws it up for grabs. Another Cooper comes down with it. Eli Cooper reels it in and it's tied up 7-7 only after three minutes. Later in the first, Cooper throws a dart to Corey Platt Jr. No shoelace tackle has taken him down. Platt off to the races. Nobody's catching him. 17-7, ORCA. <laughs> Into the second we go, Central responds. Lawson Gunn looking for options, turns out he's the best option. Gunn on the run as the Tigers cut the deficit to three. But later in the quarter, LRCA is back in the red zone and Javion Dyer-Jones is in the end zone. Things looking darn good for LRCA, up 27-14, but check out this catch and this call. Did Sam Franklin secure it? Refs think so. 27-21 before half, but LRCA gives us one more highlight. Isaiah Hankins from 43 yards out nails it. The field goal puts Little Rock Christian on top of Central, 30-21, going into half. And Little Rock Christian goes on to win it 57-35. Great game. Central plays at Hall next week. Little Rock Christian goes to Searcy. Last night's weather moved Jonesboro Catholic back at 8 to tonight. So let's head to War Memorial Stadium. Jonesboro with the ball, cross jumper, back to pass. The Rockets are all over him. Helmet comes flying off, but the ball stays in jumper's hands. Later in the drive, Brock McCoy goes around the end. Six yard score, Jonesboro up 7 to nothing. JHS looking for more. Jumper trying to set up the screen, but it's picked off by Thomas Fitz. Great play sliding in there. Rockets take advantage of the turnover. Brandon Pesiglia. Beats everyone to the corner. We're all tied at seven. Your final score in this one, Jonesboro wins it, 28-24. Good game. Now to Northwest Arkansas, Salem Springs hosted Rogers. Mounties rallied to beat the Panthers in the last meeting back in 2017. Christian Francisco deep to Mac Coops in the end zone touchdown. Fast forward. Tied at 21, second quarter. Panthers just bulldoze, bulldoze their way across the goal line, taking the lead. Rodgers answers, though. Noah, good shield. He slips a tackle and takes it to the house. Break the tackle, and that's what happens. Final score in this one. Rodgers wins 52-42. National Dog Day was earlier this week. Tonight we had the Bulldogs and the Pointers. Springdale and Van Buren. Bring down the red zone. Quarterback up the middle, but a big hit. Ball is out. Baylor Shook picks it up. It's a foot race. No one is catching him. 98 yards for the touchdown. What a momentum changer. Van Buren up 7-0. This time Gary Phillips takes it right up the middle. Pointers up 14-0. Springdale on the one-yard line. Red Dogs push their way to get on the board. Final score in this one. 
Springdale falls to Van Buren 48-28. We finish up with another 7A versus 5A game. Heritage at Farmington. Ian Cartwright, Farmington, short pass to Caden Elsick. Runs the sideline for the score, 50 yards, big play. Six to nothing. Early second quarter, Heritage punting and his block. Caden Teague then runs it in for the touchdown. What a special team play. They go for two. It's no good. It's 12 to nothing. Late second half, Heritage trying to make something happen. Throwing a deep picked off by DeCorey Thomas. He takes it back to midfield. Your final score from Cardinal Stadium. Farmington wins it 24 to 6. Fearless Friday is just getting started. Coming up next, we'll name our Northwest Arkansas MVP. Plus, we'll check on last year's 6A state champions, the Searcy Lions. Tonight, they start the season on the road against Cabot. You are watching Fearless Friday. Now, your Fearless Friday Northwest Arkansas MVP of the Week, powered by RGC Glass, Inc. It is Drayden Norwood of Fort Smith Northside. The Texas A&M commit carrying the Grizzlies to a win over Southside last night. He rushed for two touchdowns, threw for another. They went 35-7 over the Mavericks. Norwood was 17-27 passing, 205 yards and a touchdown, rushing for 55 yards and a pair of scores. A lot of change for the Searcy Lions. Last year they won the 6A title, but this year they have a new head coach. Kenny Simpson takes over for Mark Kelly. Tough start for Coach Simpson and the Lions. They played at Cabot. Troy Lynch was there and has more. It was a great night of football here at Panther Stadium in Cabot, Arkansas. The Panthers taking on the defending 6A champions, the Searcy Lions. Now, these two teams both have a lot of firepower, so you knew that there was going to be a lot of highlights and what I like to call the Big Cat Bowl. Let's check out the highlights right now. There were more masks than a Halloween party, but hey, that's what pandemic football looks like. Cabot hosting the reigning 6A champs, Searcy, in the season opener. Hey, first play of the game, Cabot's Tyler Gee. He's feeling good and going big. But the deep ball intercepted by Kylie Parker. Big turnover for the Lions. And you know what? It will result in points. On the following drive, Kyler Tangler finds a wide open Daniel Perry. And I don't know if he dances, but he waltzes into the end zone for six. They would miss the PAT, so that's all they would get. Six nothing, Lions. Let's get a social distancing update. That is Cabot's crap. 
All right, back to football. And the Panther faithful will like this. Tangler looking for Perry again, but gets picked off this time. So Cabot is back in business. G looking for some redemption, and boy, does he get it. Kyler Carmack with only one hand and takes it in to even the odds. What a play. And the Panthers take a 7-6 lead in the first quarter. But call Daniel Perry Simba because he's the Lion King. Gets a huge hole from the O-line, tries to tiptoe in, but is knocked down at the one-yard line. But he would punch it in the next play. Cersei retakes the lead 12-6. That's the halftime score. But, of course, it was a tale of two halves as the Panthers rattle off, I don't even know how many touchdowns, but they come out with the win 35-18. to And Coach Scott, he couldn't have been happier with his second half performance. Well, we finally settled down and took care of the ball offensively. I thought our defense played pretty well all night. Uh, we turned the ball over three or four times in the first half. We looked like the first ball game. Uh, and give, give Cersei credit, they played really well in the first half. Uh, really pleased with the second half effort, though. It's just awesome to get to play ball. We want any, you know, we've got to get better, obviously. Uh, but for, for a group of kids, uh, you know, that across the state, across the country, everybody kind of got shut down athletically in March. Tonight was an awesome night. So down go the defending 6A state champions. The Panthers come out on top. Big, big second half for Cabot. And that was just such a fun game to watch. It was the battle of 7A against 6A. But this time, 7A came out on top. At Panthers Stadium, I'm Troy Lynch for Fearless Friday. Wes, back to you. Coach Reed, it was an awesome night. Cabot plays at Jonesboro next week. Cersei hosts Little Rock Christian. Let's head to Garland County, a big rivalry game. Lakeside hosts Lake Hamilton. Lake Hamilton up 7-0, looking for more. Owen Miller takes the short handoff and scores 14-0 Wolves. Lake Hamilton not done in the first. Tevin Woodley takes a handoff, follows his blockers, and scores from 7 yards. It's 14-0 Wolves. Now the second. Lakeside in business. Will Ross rolls right and finds Brock Gardner for the score. That cuts it to 21-7. Great highlights there from Lakeside High School, but Lake Hamilton wins at 31-17. Now to South Arkansas. Arkadelphia on the road against Camden Fairview. Here's the Badgers in the third quarter. It's fourth down and five. The ball is on the Camden 42-yard line. Braden Thomas throws it, connects with Alex Lloyd, goes untouched for the touchdown. Badgers go up 14 to six. A couple possessions later, Cardinals back on offense. This time hoping to put some points on the board. Logan Robertson handing it to Rashard Clardy. Clardy goes up the middle. He's still running. They take him down the 12-yard line. Two drives later, the Cardinals are on their own 11-yard line, and who? Yeah, Clardy again, touchdown. Overtime, Arkadelphia wins 21-20. Let's check on Sylvan Hills, former coach. It is, there he is, Jim Withrow. He's on the sideline looking to build a program at Hall. Got to get that foundation going, and it's going to take time. Warriors struggled, and they've struggled for years. But Hope struggled, too. This was a battle of defenses. Early on, yeah, defenses ahead of the offense. Hope couldn't get anything going. They missed the field goal. Low scoring game in this one. Your final from Scott Field. Zero to seven. Hall wins. So congratulations, Coach Withrow. A win is a win. Just 20 miles separate Whitehall and Sheridan. Tonight, they played each other. In the first quarter, Sheridan's Connor Canterbury scores. Nice touchdown. Peyton Edwards brings it in for the two-point conversion. Spread it out and run it up the middle. Whitehall gets the ball back in the second quarter. Caleb Taylor. Cam Robinson, touchdown. It's 10-7 with four minutes to go in the second quarter. With one last score in the first half, Whitehall, touchdown, 35-17. Whitehall wins it. We finish up with a 5A matchup. BB on the road against Greenbrier. Greenbriars, Nick Hewitt takes a handoff, bangs his way into the end zone for the touchdown for the Bulldogs. After the kickoff, BB fumbles the snap, and Greenbriars, Brandon Beck, comes up with the recovery. Defense getting fired up. That turnover set up the Bulldogs deep into BB territory. Trey Havens takes a handoff up the middle. Pay dirt, 14 0. Your final is all Greenbrier. They win it. 55 to 6. Next up, we'll name the Central Arkansas MVP, plus, we'll check on some of the smaller classifications Hazel, Elkins, Boxite, Nashville, and much more coming up on Fearless Friday.
Now, your fearless Friday Central Arkansas MVP of the week, powered by Mercedes-Benz of Little Rock. Central Arkansas MVP is Jalen Witcher from Pulaski Academy. He had five touchdowns tonight for the Bruins. The Bruins taking on Joe T. Robinson and Jalen Witcher, one of the many stars of this game. But he is our Central Arkansas MVP juggling catch there. What a night for Jalen Witcher and the Bruins. The Mayflower Eagles were very excited about tonight's season opener. Mayflower has a new turf field, and they're showing it off. Let's head to Patrick Stadium to check out CAC and the Eagles. CAC's Tyler Williams keeps the ball, runs down inside the Mayflower 20, but he fumbles the ball out of bounds. At least it went out of bounds. It's tied at 14. Three plays later, Ethan DeMarco carries Mayflower defenders over the goal line. 21-14 lead late in the third quarter. Now Mayflower quarterback Eli Sanders going deep, looking. 56-yard pass to Tate Langrell for the Eagles on the next play. Eagles running back Gabe Morris goes through the CAC defense. 21-20 with 10 minutes left. Eagles went for two, but they were stopped short. CAC wins at 35-20. Next up, Des Ark and first-year head coach B.J. Pascal hosting Palestine Wheatley. Des Ark starts things off with a Strong quarterback keeper for Luke Morton for the touchdown. Palestine Wheatley tries answering right back on offense, but it's picked off by Desark. The Eagles with the big play. Was he down? Guess not. Keep running. They didn't blow the whistle. That's right. Keep on going. I didn't hear a whistle either. Later on, Holloway gets in, turning right back around. Holloway delivering the touchdown for Desark. Desark wins big tonight, 43 to six. Just down the road from Desark, Hazen hosting McCrory. Starting off the second half strong, McCrory throws a bomb downfield. Impressive catch going up for it. The offense capitalizes on that drive with a nice run and score from 56. Don't have his name on the roster. Hazen looks to get things rolling with the handoff. Nice spin move and a gain for a couple yards there. Hazen looking to get things going. Unfortunately, on the next play, Hazen's safety's in the his own end zone. It's Hazen with the safety, giving the Jaguars some points. Your final score in this one, McCrory wins it 10 to 6. Ah, I'm open, I'm open. Good play. Let's head to South or to Northwest Arkansas. Grab it, hosted team out of Oklahoma. Vian, all defense in the first. Vian's Jalen Wright tackled on his own five-yard line. Grab it, quarterback. Cy Hilger is tackled on fourth down, trying to make a play, but he can't get the first down, turning it over. Vian's Xavier Lackey, long run, gets the first down to set up the first score. Diego Ramos' pass is complete to Elijah Wright. Only score of the half. Two-point conversion is no good. Your final score, Bayern wins it. They beat Gravit. D. Ridge is moving up to 5A. Tonight, they hit the road to play Shiloh Christian. The Shiloh defense, or the Shiloh offense looks just the same. Cam Wiedemann punches it in. First score of the season. Little later, fourth down, P. Ridge goes for it. How about the quarterback scramble for the first down? So you know what, rewarding. Quarterback sneak, touchdown. Kickoff now, Ben Baker. Shaking Baker, turns on the Jets and he gets Shiloh Christian on the board again. Final score from Springdale, Shiloh Christian beats P. Ridge 47-14. Next up, let's check out Lincoln and Elkins. Start with Elkins, Trevor Shoemate. Takes the handoff, runs around the right side, does not go out of bounds. That is a touchdown, first one of the game. Lincoln comes right back. They're looking deep. They're going to find someone deep. Catches it right along the side. Why, does he get in? Yes, he gets in. Two-point conversion. How about it? Yeah, right up the middle. We saw a play like that earlier. Elkin scores again. Trevor Shoemate. Hey, we've heard his name before. He catches a pass from Johnson for the touchdown. They go for two. Final score in this one, 46 to eight, all Elkin. Now to the pit, the Boxite Miners hosted the Riverview Raiders. Lots of turnovers at the start of this game. Boxite fumbles the ball, it's recovered by Jose Estrada for the Raiders. But Riverview can't seem to keep the ball or keep their hands off the ball after the snap. It's immediately fumbled. It's recovered by the Miners. Later on, Raiders brought down for the sack. Senior linebacker Will Duncan with the play. 
Miner's defense was big all night. They go on to shut out Riverview 42 to nothing. We finish up with the Nashville Scrappers. They hosted Pleasant Grove out of East Texas. Logan Johnson rushing up the middle for Pleasant Grove. He breaks it and he's gone. Seven to nothing, PG. More from Pleasant Grove. Nick Martin right up the middle, bounces it outside, touchdown, 14 nothing, PG. More from Pleasant Grove. Hicks, he runs it in for the touchdown. It was 21 to nothing when Nashville finally got some points on the board in the second quarter. They were down 27 to 7, and they end up losing to Pleasant Grove 48 to 7. Coming up next on Fearless Friday, we will unveil the play of the week. Plus, we'll finish up with a trip to Lone Oak to see how they did against Carlisle. You're watching Fearless Friday. Your Fearless Friday Play of the Week, powered by UA Little Rock. Let's head out to Central High School. It's Little Rock Christian in Central, and how about that play from Platt? Looked like he was tackled at line of scrimmage, broke two tackles, and he is gone. Corey Platt with our play of the night. The Sylvan Hills Bears started a new era tonight. Chris Hill takes over for Jim Withrow. The New Look Bears played at Maumel against a very talented Hornets team. Roger Scott from 103.7 The Buzz is the newest member of Fearless Friday, and he has the highlights. Maumel, Arkansas, McLarty Nissan Stadium, Sylvan Hills comes to town. Maumel goes into halftime with a 20 to 7 lead. Let's pick it up in the third quarter. All right, we begin the third quarter, 20 to 7. Maumel is in the lead. Their first possession, Paxton Compton hands the ball off to Jalen Smith, and he's gone smoke show. There it is. The PAT is good. It's 27 7, just like that. Maumel again with the ball. Paxton Compton can't handle the snap. Oh, it's a fumble. Matthew Spencer, number 18, a scoop and score. The PAT is good. It's 27-14. Sylvan Hills defense steps up big. They hold Maumel's big man on fourth down. They try to mount a comeback. Well, gets the ball back, but they have to punt the ball again, and Keenan Hunter gets it for Sylvan Hills and takes it in for the score. It's now 27-21. Anytime you play against Chris Hill and Flexbone, it, it's going to be a tough night for you. Uh, un unfortunately, you know, we made a couple mistakes and we paid for them, and, uh, and credit to Sylvan Hills for taking advantage of those. Well, there you have it. I got a feeling that Coach Horton's going to be working with the defense a little bit harder next week. 27 21, Maul Mel wins at home. All right, thanks a lot, Roger. Sylvan Hills hosts Catholic next week. Maul Mel goes to Joe T. Robinson. You got to love rivalry uh, week in. 
Week one, I went to Lone Oak County and found a good one. Just nine miles separate Lone Oak and Carlisle. Second offensive play for Lone Oak and Anthony Parks provides the fireworks, makes two miss, and he's gone. 78 yards, 7 to nothing, Jackrabbits just like that. Next possession for Lone Oak. Spencer Pepper to Markel White, Markeel White, the senior receiver, finds some room to run. He won't go down. White picks up 26 yards. Parks scored later in the drive to make it 14 to nothing. Lono wins this one, 49 to six. Two South Arkansas powerhouses met tonight, Camden, Harmony Grove, and Junction City. No score in the first quarter. Junction City's Gabe Richard throws it up and catches it. Next play, Richard chucks it up, same receiver. If it works, just keep doing it, right? Dragons in the red zone, and Richard hands off to A.J. Ivory, six points, six to nothing. Hornets on offense. Their quarterback takes a snap. Quarterback takes the snap, Smith move, and he's finally brought down. Harmony Grove now at the 10. Mecca Arnold, touchdown. Final score in this one, Junction City. Camden Harmony Grove, another great game, and Harmony Grove wins it 20 to 14. Next up, the Foreman Gators hosted Idabel out of Oklahoma. We start with Foreman's Keontae Oglesby. Tough yards, not a whole lot there. Next up, Idabel, Jackson Thompson. Trying to get something going, but the quarterback is brought down. Nothing going. But a little bit later, Idabel gets in. Jackson Thompson keeps it going. Idabel gets a two-point conversion. They lead eight to nothing. They go on to win 28-6, your final score. Now to Texarkana. Genoa Central hosted Poyan. Poyan tanking on Genoa, Genoa Central. First quarter, Trent Bearden hands it off. Runs it down the sideline, knocked out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Genoa Central going for the touchdown. Quarterbacks gets it in, no problem. Trent Bearden, touchdown. Genoa goes for two, they get it, it's eight to nothing. Poyan in possession. Blake Rhodes runs it in the middle for the touchdown right there. They go for two. Tie game, 8-8, eight, eight. final score. Poyan wins it 40 to eight. We've talked about the app. You know about FearlessFriday.com, right, by now? Do you know about the standings? Do you know about the forum, the chat room? Well, and the scoreboard right there. You can go right now, take a look at all the scores from FearlessFriday.com. It's been a year since we lost Mitch Patras, but we miss him just as much as ever. We will never forget Mitch Patras, and once again, we will hand out the Mitch Patras Award after the season. It will go to the high school football player that best represents Mitch's characteristics. I want to encourage high school coaches to email me your nominations. We're looking for that player that demonstrates Mitch's love for the game. You know, he's that guy that's always got a smile on his face. He's picking up his teammates in the locker room. Shows great attitude and effort. You know who I'm talking about, coaches. Email me, wmore at fox16.com. That's going to do it for tonight. Thank you for watching, and as always, Mitch gets the last word. Wes, I'm here with the Charging Wildcat Spirit Truck guys. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at those first half highlights. You saw the first half highlights, second half pretty much the same thing. North Little Rock took care of business. Final score, 41-30, right? Oh, yeah. No, no chance. No, no, no chance. What? No competition. Hey, go get that truck fired up for me. Yeah, yeah. Wes, hey, North Little Rock took care of business tonight like they usually do. Good luck to the other 2-0 start of the season. Back to you.